guys and welcome back to my channel. It's Yvonne from Ginger Chick Rehab. So glad to have you back seeing what I am up to today. So I am still working on my thrifting, yeah, my thrifted stash. So I'm, that's a goal of mine to the end of the year to get my stash completed, even though I'm constantly still thrifting. But in today's video, I am bringing you Lazy Susan turntable makeovers. Yes, they are something that is still selling. So, and I have no idea why I'm constantly finding them in a thrift store, but I'm like, oh, I have a lot of them and I need to get them done and share the vision and the process of what I do to these items to get them ready to resell. So here they are. You can tell by the dust. Yes, they have been sitting around for a while and I need to get this grouping done. Yep, some are homemade, some are just Ikea. I probably thrift them between a three and an eight dollar price range. And these vintage looking ones, I definitely am just going to leave as is. Well, I'm going to clean it and give it a paint job. You can see that sun fading going on there. But just super cute, classic looking Lazy Susans. And, and to throw in this mix, mix, this heavy cutting board. Oh my gosh, look at that. So we'll start right off with the behind the scenes of getting all the tags and getting these cleaned up. Just some super clean and some hot water will be just fine to get all these items prepped. Now after getting them all clean, I'm just going to be using my True Coat sprayer. There's just a quick and easy, definitely a blessing to have this sprayer. So I'm just using that black onyx, ready to use black paint right off the shelf from Walmart for half of these. Half of these are going to be white, half of these are going to be black. Now as I'm spraying these up, you'll notice, notice that I kept the little felt pads, any felt on the bottom of these Lazy Susan. I have learned over time that the felt just absorbs the paint in and then I don't have a problem with any sticky residue. It still has that padding on there so it doesn't scrape up. There's really no problems. It's not like a tag where paint just lays on top of it. It absorbs in and the black paints it kind of like painting fabric. Now that, that black paint is dry, I'm going to go ahead and seal it in using some Rust-Oleum in the clear coat. I don't mind this clear coat because it soaks right into these wood items. And here's where you can really tell what I'm talking about when I'm talking about that felt, how it just soaks it right in. My clear coat is dry, I'm going to go ahead and flip them over and get the rest of the surface area that didn't get covered in that first coat. And then after that side is dry, then I'm going now for the top of it, I want to make sure that it's good and sealed in. I want to make sure that it's food safe. So I'm going for the polycrylic for the top of these pieces. I don't want any problems with any crinkling. Sometimes that rust of lamb, even though it usually absorbs into the, into the wood, doesn't do that. But just so for my finished tops, I want to make sure that I'm using my good polycrylic. For the other half of these Lazy Susans, I'm going to be, these are more of a turntable type. So I'm going to be spray painting them white. But on this oak one, I definitely know that it's going to cause me some bleed through problems. So I'm gonna go ahead and give it a couple coats of shellac. Bleed through is where it turns my white paint more of a yellow. And then now I'm just going to simply just spray paint them white. Now I've changed out my True Coat sprayer, got it all cleaned out. Now I have the Kills Paint and Primer in one in my sprayer now. Now it's the same process as the black. Once that white is dry, I can flip them over and start working on the other side. I let, although I do not do a clear coat on the white, I don't need to seal this in. It has primer in with it. It's definitely heavenly to get to be able to use a sprayer and all these tiny little spindles. This would not be fun with a brush at all. Okay, how many of you all started leaving me a bad comment when you saw me spray painting this cutting board? 
Now I just wanted to give it more of a visual by painting the bottom black. That black is really going to pop that detail that is engraved in the side. Now I'm just going to go ahead with some 80 grit sandpaper, work my way from a 120 to a 220 to bring this so it's nice and smooth, take out any gouges that have happened over time, and hopefully take out some of that oranginess that's there. After I get it all sanded, it's nice and smooth. That did kind of take down that oranginess. I'm just going to condition it using some cutting board oil. When it comes to Lazy Susans that have sides like this, I think the sides speak for themselves. I think it's a beautiful detail that I don't need to put any words or any other kind of details on them. But I am going to go in with some sandpaper and distress any of the edges that I can. This will just give it that aged look. And I'm going to go in with some 300 grit sandpaper and just any of that flat surface area. I'm just going to open it up because I, yep, I am going to be using some antiquing wax to bring this all together. This brown antiquing wax is just going to take this black paint to a whole nother level. It's just going to richen it up. It's going to seal and protect that paint. As you see, it just gets absorbed right in it, and then it's going to make where I distress the sharp edges just pop. Now for this turntable, I'm just going to use this simple, just a simple stencil on it. Now this kind of has that boho medallion type of vibe to it, and that usually sells really well for me. So I'm trying to do items that I know are classic, that I know the stenciling, not go anything too crazy. We're getting towards the end of the year. So you, I really want to control my inventory by getting these items to sell. So knowing what your clientele has been looking for it is, is definitely key at this point. But for my color that I'm going to be using, I'm going to go ahead and, and use some of the Dixie Bells of French linen to do my stencil color. I absolutely love this with black. When using the stencil brush with the swirling technique, you want to make sure that you have minimal paint on there and that one hand is always holding that stencil if you did not tape it off or use some sticky adhesive. So I'm just making sure that I always have one hand so my stencil is not shifting on me. putting a mist of the polycrylic over the stencil I want to try to keep that crisp but don't you just love those two colors together same thing I'm going to go ahead and give it some age just by distressing those sharp edges and lightly sanding over the rest of the piece and then finishing it up with some antiquing wax now I have four of these larger lazy Susans turntables and they're just flat. And so I'm gonna just do some simple grain sack striping. They're all gonna be similar. They're all gonna have the striping. And I'm going to attempt to try to reuse the Jamie Ray Vintage stencil. Uh, I'm still on the fence, but I'm gonna try some of that tacky spray and see how it goes. I really rubbed it on there, making sure that it was on there. For this one, I'm just gonna use this soft gray, just something simple going in with a stencil brush again, just a little bit of paint on my brush. Well, I just can't ever get these little lines on that stencil to work out for me. So I'll do a little bit of touch up. I'll get it sanded first, but just not as crisp as lines as I'm used to. And also I'll switch over to my tape measure, 
method. It would be nice to have it be able to be as quick as just having it done, but the clean lines mattered a little bit more to me than that. One of my ways of doing these that are the best seller is, yep, I just get out my I see Paris stamps and I do that cafe stamp. Simple as that, simple green sack stripes in a color, and then this simple stamp on the bottom of one of the edges has just always been one of my best sellers when it comes to turntables like this. Okay, so I'm just going to go back to my old faithful of masking tape the way that I normally have learned how to do green sack stripings. I want those stencils to work, but every time I have too much cleanup to deal with. So yeah, some products work really well and some not so much. So just making sure that my first piece of tape is nice and centered. I always do a recap when I'm doing green sack stripings because this could be somebody's first time ever watching one of our videos and they may not know how to do the tape method and I know a lot of my viewers do but so bear with me so now on either side of that first piece of tape you laid you lay another piece of masking tape on both sides but it right up to that piece of masking tape and then that center piece you remove because that's where your first paint stripe is going to go well we're in the season so why not some of this cranberry red? I still have that red bread box I did. Nobody's purchased it yet, but there's hope yet. So yeah, so why not do a little coordinating turntable to go with that bread box? And, you know, it's wishful thinking to think that red paint is going to cover in one coat over white. So I actually switched over to just a makeup sponge from the Dollar Tree store just to make sure that I'm filling it in and not wiping excess off. This is always a personal preference, but I like to make sure that my paint is dry usually before removing the tape. I've had way too many times where my tape just went a flying and touched an area that I did not want it to touch and then had yeah, more cleanup, there we go again. But yep, so I, I much rather take a blow dryer and make sure that my paint is dry. And also it helps release that sticky of that tape so it doesn't pull off your original paint job. I have a couple more stripes to go. So what I'm doing here is I'm just leaving about a quarter inch of space moving it off to the one side so you can see the space of that's not covered up with the paint and then the space that underneath the tape that is going to be left unpainted. Now I do the exact same thing on the opposite side, leaving a little bit of a quarter inch of a space that's going to be left unpainted. And then now for my next stripe, I'm just going to eyeball what I think is another quarter of an inch that's where my paint is going to go, and then I just lay another piece of that masking tape right there. This is just really an eyeball game. You want it to look perfect, but it's always that little bit of a perfectly imperfect, that handmade, homemade look. This is really where I want to use my blow dryer. I've got tape over that freshly painted red, so I'm going to make sure I have the heat on the blow dryer on that, especially so I'm not pulling off that red paint. It's dry to the touch, but it hasn't had time to cure, so I want to make sure that I re reactivate that sticky so it's not pulling it off. And then I'll go around and I'll distress that outer edge. And then I also like to sand it smooth. When you have done a stencil or you've done tape like this, that paint that you applied over the top of it is always raised up. So I just like to gently go in and just gingerly sand that down so it's smooth. And I'm going to be doing that same exact IC Paris Cafe stamp. I have four of these boards. I'm going to do four different colors all on the same theme with that cafe. Like I said, as soon as I usually put these in, they are sold, so why not make four of them going into the holiday season? I wonder if anybody noticed the packing tape that I was using. Sometimes when you have a simple one stamp, the stamping mount that I have is too big and awkward. My, I have other like acrylic blocks but they you can't really get that touch and feel so i just cut off a piece of packing tape tape it to it make little handles and then it's very workable for me for my other two stripe colors i went in with some french linen 
and then some of the Dixie Belle a buttercream color. After getting these all sanded, I'm going to go ahead and give them a coat to seal that paint that I put in with some polycrylic and especially where I did that stamp. And just like those black turntable lazy Susans, I'm going to go ahead and just give these white ones a distressing just like I did the other ones. And then all my white pieces will get a nice finished coat of the Verithane finishing wax to seal and protect. Now, yep, I'm on my last can of the Verithane finishing wax. I don't know what's going on in the world, but Home Depots, even when we're out of town, are not carrying it either. So I'm just like you all. I, I'm on my last can. Okay, so what did you think? I thought felt as if these were a simple flip. I tried to keep it very simple. Yep, I tried the January Vintage stencil again. I'm not gonna, yeah, it just doesn't work well for me. So I gotta go back to my old tape measure. Not that I might, my tape mess method. So yes, I just, yep, I'm keeping it basic, you know, getting ready into the holiday season and I'm going to do what sells and grain sack sells and why not do them in a few different colors? So I hope that you enjoyed today's video and give me a comment. Have you ever made over and sold Lazy Susan turntables or have I inspired you to go out to the thrift stores looking for some? So thanks for watching today's video guys and I appreciate all your kind compliments and your kind words and just sharing your tips with me. And then don't forget to give a thumbs up if you like this kind of video because that lets YouTube know that you like this kind of content and they'll keep recommending us and if you were new and checking out us for the first time and you liked what you saw, please hit that subscription button along with the notification bell so you know when we've uploaded a new video. And we will see you next time, guys, and you can see what we're up to. Bye.